With every passing moment Thoughts of you run through my head Every time that I'm near you I realize that you're heaven sent, baby I think you're truly something special Just what my dreams are really made of Let's stay together, you and me, boy There's no one like you around, oh baby I really like what you done to me I can't really explain it I am so into you. I Whoa, ha, 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 ha. Everybody, welcome back to Middle Earth. It's Jaden XD. Welcome to Purgatory. Yes, one stop shop for all things hellacious. I'm XD. <laughs> Ooh, me too, nigga. It is hellacious <laughs> over here. Let me tell you something. Hell bound. Yeah. I yeah. started reading. I, I, I don't know if I'm. No, I'm not hell. More, I'm Middle Earth, is what I am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to torture you a little bit, but I'll let you live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about all killing. Sometimes it's just, sometimes they just cut out your tongue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um... <laughs> <clears throat> Can't give a heck where there's a big hole in your neck. You don't always die from tobacco. But you can from being a privileged, mediocre white man. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. You can, you know, there's a list uh, of volumes. There's binders full of white. <laughs> <laughs> Through history, history, nigga. Mitt Romney ever gave us was binders. <laughs> he said, I got a list of niggas. <laughs> that was me, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We're back. Okay, my bad. Um, anyway, how was your week? Oh, it was it was a good week, productive. Um, I'm just loving school, man. I'm just having a good time. Mm. Uh, and can I, one of the food, obviously, being able to study the food and all of that. It's obviously my favorite part. I'm so glad I did it. But there is just a freedom and being a middle-aged black woman. <laughs> there's, there's just the freedom that comes along with it where I'm like, this is lovely. You know what I'm saying? I just say what I want, nigga. And not, I'm not saying with no consequence. I'm saying, because when I speak is with intention, right? But you're going to hear it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm realizing that some of these... Um, some of these young white boys in my class, you know, their mothers mm. may have made their beds. You know what I'm saying? Or breastfed them till they were five. But regardless, there is a privilege and a laziness that I just can't really like vibe with like that. <laughs> um... And so I had to, you know, I just, I t had to say it today. And I love the fact that I just don't give a fuck about saying it to nobody. No, I don't care. And I said, I said, you know, I'm noticing a trend with the white boys around here. <laughs> and mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it, it just feels lovely. You know what I'm saying? And it feels lovely that it's also seen, you know, the world, including the white women. International Women's Day. Look at that. See the privilege of these mediocre white boys. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. 
I think mediocrity is there's more to that something that they're really right good there, at because it's international women's day. Go ahead. <laughs> mediocrity is something that they're really good at, and nobody has a better PR team than a white man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how the Christian twin. But, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like, no matter, and sometimes, I don't mean to be super deep, but sometimes that shit is, like, discouraging, right? Because it's oh. just like, we do all this work, <laughs> and that whole, like, Negro speech is that you got to work twice as hard to get, you know, half of what they got. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, how, when this nigga is doing literally nothing? Oh, my God. <laughs> Struggle you know, pain with your and you know, I. You know what I'm saying? You could be, man. you gotta, you could be working on something, and they come and say, "Hey, this is what this white man is gonna be getting paid. Make sure you put that on the budget." And you'd be like, "Whoa, whoa wait a minute! Mm. What is this nigga doing?" <laughs> right. <laughs> we oh, we never did that man. before. But I say all that to say they don't have no problem asking for what they want. They don't have no problem taking an uh, AirPod case size penis and putting it on the table as if it is gargantuan. Like they don't have no problem saying what the fuck is and what the fuck is not. And so I just, I just will carry that same energy too. Like match me, nigga, because <laughs> it get chaotic up in this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we can toe to toe. Okay. Listen, uh, listen, and I'm I'm loving it. Let's do it. Let's go toe to toe. But also, when you are firm and 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 intentional about what you say, whether it stings or not, people ain't got no choice but to listen. Because if they want to fight you, they're gonna lose. And when I say fight, I don't always mm -hmm. mean literally, but that could mean literally as well. But you will lose mm -hmm. because I am right. <laughs> yeah. Well, but yes, I'm gonna live sounds my life like that way. Any, I'm gonna continue living. Sounds like you had an eventful, um, eye-opening week. Yeah. See, the thing is, was a fun, good time. Shout out to Mandy and Bridget. Shout out to them for this deal. <laughs> burr, 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 burr. Okay, mm. they are out here working. Um, so I went on there. Shout out to them. Um, yeah, and it's just been a lot of like what it's been you know what i'm saying what's your week been been mm -hmm. like Ooh, uh rough <laughs> mm -hmm. uh i ain't cut my hair no nothing um it's been a lot it's been a hell of a week mm. uh uh my friend's uh dad passed away so that was a rough time um i'm so sorry to hear that yeah also, uh, people playing with my money and not paying me on time. <laughs> Again? <laughs> yeah. Well, not with the same company. It's just okay. just somebody, you know, just in general. Mm -hmm. um, Delo launched publicly again. Yes, so. it did. <laughs> yes, you can get yourself a bottle. You don't have to create your own. Um, this time you can buy Delo directly. Yes. Um, so you can search on same all my scent. social media properties. Yes, yeah, same scent, same everything. Mm. So it's it ranges from 35 up to 150. And the more you refer people to it, the more points you get. And the more points you get, you can redeem for a free bottle. So, And, you know, you don't necessarily have to purchase to get points either. So the more you share it, the more you have an incentive. So it's pretty cool. And when you go to the site, you see a little video of mine that I made greeting you. And uh, it's a good time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm really excited that it's up. Uh, I'm also, um, I tweeted about this, but I'm doing like um, podcasting consulting. So if you're okay. interested. Yeah. So if you're interested uh and you know making your podcast um fact that the last dreams come true holler at your kid and uh we'll get some stuff going but you need to email me directly at xd at the xd experience dot com yes i support this message yeah uh there's a lot of um podcasts out there that are really good 
and they just need some fine tuning and a little direction. And um, I feel like we have made our imprint in the podcasting um, yeah, Mount definitely. Rushmore. <laughs> I'm gonna call it. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like you know we're qualified. Yeah, we are. You know, I, and we run a, a six-figure business, so that's you know. Yeah. So the point is, holler at the kid, and we will. Uh, you know, I'll make it happen for you. I'll try. So yeah, it's been busy. I went to Mary Akpa's. Uh, yes, you did. Party. <laughs> Um, it was really, really, really good. Um, she sing like, what I enjoy about good singers is when they sing live and, you know, there's no, no need for auto-tune, whatever, mm. hieroglyphics, whatever the fuck they didn't add to, Not hieroglyphics. Um, Mila J's voice or whoever the fuck <laughs> is singing, you know what I mean? But, like, <laughs> I, um... I enjoyed myself, and she sang, the most important was her instrument, and that was really great. I mean, she looked great and all that good stuff, but the music and the voice was on, so that was great. Listen, Mary um, is an ethereal fairy, okay? She just glows mm -hmm. from the inside out, and if you have not listened to her album, Nah, N-N-O-O, -O, then, which we'll put mm -hmm. in the description box, you need to, I'm not even saying that because she's the homie, like, I'm a fan of pretty. the album. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. album. Uh, mm -hmm. full of beautiful messages so shout out to mary mm -hmm. i'm so glad you all went to that yeah I'm so glad and let me you tell you what happened that. right after that because <laughs> oh. there's the story oh no so we had a great time we go to mary's thing it's you know it's fancy it, it was interesting because there was white people in the audience and like her music is very black she told me about that so <laughs> <laughs> she told me about that, and I actually love it. So, <laughs> she got a song on it called Black Body. She, she said, that's exactly you what do happened. not understand. <laughs> so, mind you, it's I'm in the middle. Chris Rogers is on my right, and Antonio is on my left, mm -hmm. right? And all of us, whatever reason, happened to look at this exact same time. So, when she sang that part, so we're sitting in these high-top tape um, chairs or whatever, and these white folks are sitting in, like, regular seating or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, they're relaxed or whatever. And we just happened to look at this white lady's hands and she had them clasped like this or whatever. And when she started singing that, it got a little tighter. Because <laughs> her knuckles start turning white, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the white man shifted. And then there was the white girl who was, you know, liberal. So, you know, she was for it. But, you know. She's probably one of those uh, homies, and, you, and if she has any white, and I'm homies, sure the white people they too. get it. Yeah, but there was yeah. a couple of uh, yeah, there was a couple of of people there who were last minute like show ups and mm. good. That's what you get when you be wanting to come up in spaces that. You <laughs> it was so interesting because then this group of um, like, I was like, oh, have you ever seen Looking from HBO? Mm -mm. Well, the white boy from Abbott Elementary is on that show. But anyway, it was like the cast of, like, Looking came in. It was like these <laughs> white gays that came in. And they came strictly for, like, like the bar area. And, like, she served this, um, you know, African drink. Um, and one was alcohol. One side had alcohol. Mm -hmm. other didn't. So they were just like, oh my gosh, I never had this. They should sell this in like WeHo. It was just like. You see, this is how this is how it starts. See, y'all don't even realize y'all say gentrified ass sentences. This is what I be talking about. Niggas wanna y'all wanna throw raisins in the collard greens and and all kinds of shit and and mm. you know you act like you paying honor but you not. <laughs> right. Um. So all of that happened. Right. Mm. Good time. It was also date night, right? So mm -hmm. we're like, okay, let's go out on the night in the town. We don't necessarily do that quite often because, a well, you know, the state yeah, of the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, it happened to be Thursday, which also means sad gay night. Um, and I do want to make this, before I move on, because this is a hell of a transition, I want to put in parentheses mm -hmm. that what I'm about to say has nothing to do with my story, okay? But I did run into Fred 
Remember Fred Smith and Fred gave us our opportunity at Cal State. Fred! Oh, Fred! Yeah, duh! Yeah. Of course. I, we saw him out and he happened to be in town and he was like, and I gave him a big hug. I was like, man, what's up? Well, you <laughs> said Fred first. He's in like, the Bay. Is this nigga from Brooklyn? I'm supposed to serve him from Brooklyn. No, no, no. no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Of course. No. Of course. I love Dr. Fred. He's Smith. in San Francisco now. Mm -hmm. Dr. Fred. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dr. Fred. Yeah. Um author everything it's amazing okay. he's trying to get back down here i was like girl come back because we were talking about uh you know there's one thing la don't have no black people but san francisco definitely don't have no black people mm -mm. So, <laughs> even in oakland it's like four of them <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so i you know I, you know it was really good seeing him um but back out of the parentheses right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we go to sad gay night what the fuck is now, Sad Gay Night? Can you just... <laughs> sad Gay Night is when... <laughs> Actually, you can interpret it how you want to. Is let's that a bar? That. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's what I'm right. just, like, ahead, deemed Sad on. Gay Night. Less, it's, not, it's not a, like, a night. It's like a, like a yeah, party. Yeah, no, night. I know. That's why well, I was like, is that a bar, right? We're going to Sad Gay Thursdays at, like, heat. Like, no. No, no I knew it wasn't a theme. <laughs> I knew it was your theme. I just oh, yeah, wanted okay. to picture the setting so that I could fully get the full context. And now that I know that it's at a bar of sorts or, you know, in, the, in a similar um, environment, I am picking up what you're putting down. You may continue. <laughs> Yeah, like there was there was a a young um, prince, princess, duke, duchess, duchin royalty that was just dancing in a caftan all by themselves, just living their lives. It was great. They were happy though, was, right? They know, were happy. Oh yeah, it was a safe space, except which was not safe with the alcohol. Now I talked about this on Twitter and Denver from. Um, the Beast Guy show chimed in and talked about this, but like they be using cheap alcohol and replacing cheap swill in the like expensive bottles. So I go, I drink. I don't Who's doing that? That's a lot. They, we haven't done that at any bar I've ever worked at. Apparently, it's a thing in California. Mm. Like it's an article about uh, about how they have these deals um, on alcohol they get straight from Mexico. Okay. Kind of like how, not as a comparison, but how we don't have activists anymore in America, but they have activista for um, to make lean and stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, uh, so it had, and Chris Rogers pointed it out because he was like, we went to we went to two different places, mm -hmm. one place, then we went to a different place, and then we went back. And he was like, I've noticed that they actually opened the bottle when we were at the, when we were at the Abbey. And it, it did taste, it, it tasted different. I was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to taste. Mm. So when I tell you, honey, I got home, I had three drinks. Mind you, you know, I'm not necessarily the biggest drinker, mm -hmm. but I was going through it. It was just a lot. Thursday was a lot. So <laughs> I was like, okay, feeling it, whatever. I'm cool. Get home. Fine. Go to sleep. Cool. Wake up at 3 a.m. When I tell you, I threw out like my eyeballs. Oh, you should have, you should have took the milk, milk this old nigga. Yeah, but it was so weird. But like, Jade, you know how normally when you have like, you get drunk and you drink too much, you throw up one and mm -hmm. done or maybe two and done? Mm -hmm. Nigga, I was throwing up for like seven hours. So that's, so you're like me. I don't, I've never been a one and done throw up person. So sorry for anybody who hates this conversation. Oh, yeah, trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. I've never been a one and done. Like, it's always, it, that's why I hate doing it so much because it's an event. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is a cocktail party, there is a main reception, and then there's an after fucking party, nigga. <laughs> and I'm yeah. ready to stop partying, nigga. And I'm ready. Yeah. And I can't. So that's why, that's one reason I do, I, 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 you know, really got real heavy on milk this little clean and out because it just really made a difference. But then also, I had to recognize what was like not fucking with my body because I can't do that anymore. Like, and then the older you get, the more that shit. I swear, it takes lot. It takes lives off of you, nigga. Like, yeah. 
Yo, son. I'm like, I... I'm like, oh my god, I just lost a week. <laughs> like, I'm gonna die a week <laughs> earlier now. I was so distraught. I was in the bed. I, I uploaded the episode for my phone. I was just like, I was just like, I cannot do this. I and know. it's like, it, it got to the point where like, I couldn't move. Yeah. I'm like, this is like legit alcohol poisoning. I'm like, girl. But the point is to say, if you out and you get these, you go to happy hours, especially in New York. Well, I've never had this. Well, I've only had a, one problem like this in New York City. And that was at a bar in Bushwick. But, you know, I'm king of cheap alcohol back in the day when I used to go mm -hmm. to the sidewalk and all that good stuff. And we and used I to hit 12th Street, like, real yeah. heavy. And, I mean, I mean, I, I used to be fucked up, but that's because, literally, I would be having as many drinks. I would have, like, nine drinks. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, of course you're going to be fucked up, bitch. Yeah, they're 250. <laughs> oh, I miss 12th Street. Yeah, yeah I miss. I heard they closed. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, yeah, I said that. They did close. Mm, I'm the mm, one who said it. What mm, the fuck? That yeah, weed. I, um, I, I, I miss the times. You know what I'm saying? I miss, like, us just r going to the bar and ordering food and, you know, really getting fucked up off of $2 drinks. That was reckless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, like, walking through the park and drinking giant cans of Four loco when it was... You know, with the illegal shit in it. You know what I'm saying? Just shit like that. Like, I have promethazine in it. But I don't miss... <laughs> like, I don't want to do that again. I just... No. It was a beautiful time. I missed those times. Yeah. I missed the carefree element. Yes. I missed... I missed the lack of responsibility. Wow, we really... Like, we really sat up on, like, a Wednesday and watched Polly. <laughs> we didn't have shit yeah. to... Do and we, even when we had jobs, he'd be like, "Want me at the bar after, nigga?" Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's work tomorrow. But fuck it, we ball. Like, what yeah. in the hell? That's the one thing that they really lack in Los Angeles, and that's I don't want to say lack of community because I'm sure in Inglewood and South I, I've heard it's not it's community. not a uh, it's not like a like a fall through situation like here there i hear no, that culture is different right it's very much like it's very easy to walk up on somebody in new york or at a bar and uh you know hey after work or whatever because they are the work of the neighborhood or whatever and yeah, like the train is culture. a great equalizer right mm -hmm. yeah right so here it's like it's a lot more planning and a lot more orchestrating which leads to a lot more flakiness because of the fact you have to do so much mm -hmm. And, and, and can I just tell you, like, I understand making plans ahead of time because there are times when we have to do that. But a lot of times our attitudes are completely different from the moment that we make the plan to the moment when it's time to ex actually execute it. You mm -hmm. know, and which is where all these memes come from with people being like, girl, I'm so glad you canceled first, you know, and shit like that. Because really, niggas just be tired. And I think it's OK to say, yeah. at the time, I was real hype about this, and now I'm real hype about not leaving my house. Yeah. That's how me and, and my home girls communicate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's take care of some bills and stuff oh, and yeah. announcements. Um, as you know, um, you can listen to us anywhere and everywhere you get your podcasts. Um, we're not just exclusively on Spotify. So please uh, subscribe wherever you see fit. Um, all the all the links of where you can subscribe to us are in our link tree, which you can find in the description box of every episode, uh, as well as our social media platforms. Um, we encourage you to click the um, link tree link because a lot of you ask where you can find stuff, and everything is there. Where it comes from, our playlist, our show, our Patreon our YouTube channel, TikTok, all that stuff is all in Linktree. So go there, Discord and all, right? So that's number one. Number two, we have family game night number two. Oh, a good time, nigga. Yes. Um, you know, it's a Went Divas edition. Uh, it is, you know, starring... You know, our returning faves, um, Dr. Kia and Latoya yes. and Asante 
And special guest Shar will Jocelyn will be on Team XD because it's a women's month and I need a woman on my team. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's what it is. So um uh March twenty fifth, sign up for uh, Patreon right now and you can get all the details uh where you get exclusive clips from how we do it. Um, I know last week or the past few days you got when we had the whole black discussion on black TV and there's way more clips that came out of that. We were on, you got a 50 minute show and it was three hours. Long, Ooh, so. honey, it was lengthy. <laughs> I'm excited to have Shara a part this time. It's going to be, that's going to be a good time, but shout out to Carrie for joining us before. And yeah, yeah it's going to be fun. We're going to have more women energy for Women's History Month. Yeah, so it's going to be a good time. Also, we are raising money, um, you know, for, you know, getting out our dreams, no Kanye. So, um, you know, our GoFundMe, share your share it with your family. Um, you know, if you want to just a one-time thing, but also sign up for the Patreon, because that's where all the true mess and shit talking goes down, right? Truth, yes. Uh, also subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have it, I implore you to do so because there's some really cool stuff that's coming um, very soon and you might want to be a part of it. So mm -hmm. um, like this episode, for instance, it's the first episode that will actually be free available on YouTube and the only one because today we're covering uh, Love After Lockup for yes. everybody. Um, and it wouldn't be fair if we just hit it behind... Um, a paywall just this one episode so everybody gets it um and uh i said the low is available podcast all that good stuff uh is there anything else i need to announce there is not okay uh without further ado uh let's take a break and we'll be back with covering the first episode of season four of love after lockup hit, hit it claude and we're black. Uh, this week, we haven't done this in a long time just because we haven't had a new season in a long time, but we typically do the first episode, or recap the very first episode of the season of Love After Lockup on the main show mm -hmm. to get everybody a little, you know, acclimated, give them a little taste of what's to come in Absolutes. the season. Um, like we said before, you can watch this everywhere. This isn't just on Patreon. Only the pre-show is, but you can watch this full episode on YouTube and it'll probably be posted in full on social. So yeah, free episode for everybody, but go sign up for Patreon for more. Yes. Uh, this season is about to be wild. Let me tell you. Oh. And I will say Yolanda, the bounty hunter. <laughs> Did not disappoint. Is no, no. Okay, from her At appearance all. in the window. <laughs> hey, niggas. <laughs> and how they lied and said that was her friend and not her mama's girlfriend. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just want us as a people to get out of this mm, habit. That's my auntie, my roommate. Yeah, my roommate, my best friend. You know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> Let's just 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 call things things. I know we I know we are coming from different times. I know, you know, especially for some of my aunties who are in the situation and grandmothers, that you all have not had the freedom to be in the space where you felt safe. I'm here to tell you, we got you. Okay? If you're an old dusty stud from Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> This is a space for you. <laughs> you have to go watch the pre-show to understand that because that so, shit was um, fucking hilarious. Um, <laughs> where do you want to begin? You know, I don't have um, full nicknames yet. Me either, but we could flush them out as we go. I, that's what I was. I said, you know what? I think we need to to workshop this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's a lot to take in the first episode. It is. Because it's a lot of new people and a lot of new story. Um, outrageous story at that. Mm. Um, let's start Let's start with who we know so far. Let's okay. start with uh, 
um, Indy and Harry, which we call Gail King and um, Takashi Snitch Nine. Yep. Yeah. Now, if you haven't been watching or subscribed to our Patreon, which you should, but we cover this every week, and so we met them during the Love During Lockup season where uh, Gail King lives somewhere in, in Maryland and she drew, drove six hours to mm -hmm. live in a trap house to wait for her nigga to get, get to the halfway house. To Ohio. Yeah, and With then, her child. With her child, and then they left and went back to Maryland because it didn't work out like that. Um, a nigga Anyhow. that she met on jail TikTok. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jail TikTok. Mm -hmm. Jail talk, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, she, you know, they've been in a relationship for, you know, the pandemic. And so, <laughs> <laughs> they literally, uh, TikTok ain't been a thing really since, the, you know, the pandemic began. I so, mean, you know, because when be I tell long. you, these niggas are in prison making calzones in their cells. Spike Lee pose. Jay. What? <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you what I saw in person, like in detail, but just know, just know, they could be making some legit money doing porn, professional porn. Out there. Oh, I can imagine. Oh yeah, I I'm surprised that's not already. Well, listen. There's this guy, I'm about to expose a gay secret. Okay. So, but like, you know how like there's things in that community that we talk, we don't talk about. Mm -hmm. So there's this porn star that I call Blessed because he has blessed across his ass cheeks. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it separates Blessed <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so. Blessed. So, <laughs> yeah, it's like B L E S S E D. Bless Ed. Bless, <laughs> yeah, bless Ed. Yeah. Bless Ed. Because <laughs> it's a big O. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, big space, big space. So, uh, Mama, you know, had OnlyFans running and was and posting exclusive you know, prison yeah. content. Okay, good. And mama was getting railed. So I'm like, yes. y'all better go through it with Vaseline and like a Doritos bag, you know, whatever. Oh. <laughs> You've said this before. That's, that's what just... Fleece Johnson told us. <laughs> <laughs> Stop thinking about it. I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> Every time I see a Doritos bag, and I'm like, well, are they using Cool Ranch condom. or original? Mm -hmm. As long as they're staying safe, they're using a condom. But Whether is that is safe? Oil. Is anal safe? Mm. <laughs> it is, but but not with that. But anywho. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's is safe, it but it's safe, living safe, fast safe, and safe. loose, nigga. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Golly. Okay. Like, God, it's like moving on the edge of glory, glory, nigga. Like it's. Yeah. Yeah. It is. You know, it's out on a limb. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's Bell of an alarm clock. It's Maybach music, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's like that bitch just coming in. Maybach -may 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 mm -hmm. music. You're like, where did you come mm -hmm. from? Just like this. <laughs> where did, right. where yeah. did you come it's... from? <laughs> oh, God. Mm -hmm. So um, she um, she opens the episode with her being in bed, being sad. Uh, and she keeps throwing this word, word spiritual husband like it means Oh, something. my God. She, she, she's, you know, she tries to, to make, so what we found out at the end of the last season of Love During Lockup is that he was cheating on her. Now, how she learned he was cheating on her was through her, um, psychic, who I would like to call Anubis. Um, 
I think she keeps calling her Osiris or some shit like that, but honey, I call her Anubis. So she I call her Marisol. Yeah, you you call her <laughs> a few things. <laughs> yeah. She is I know her, like she is from the Bronx. I definitely yeah. given her an apartment before. Absolutely. She's online selling <laughs> conjuring kits right now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Like, conjure yourself a nigga and you're like, yes. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway. So so Anubis, you know, tells her, Yeah, y'all gonna live your happily ever after, but that nigga's cheating on you. <laughs> Yeah. Well, why this was not so profound is because she has access to his iCloud account. So she just mm -hmm. saw the pictures in the iCloud account. Um, yeah. Of, I mean, when I tell you 55 different women, just of various shades and tones, yes. all of the brown and black variety. Rocky Road, you Butter know, Pecan. Okay, there was Deluxe. no preference to size, <laughs> shape, who, what, where, when, why, or how. Um, mm -hmm. but it was a lot of hoes. And so in this episode, you know, she's, she's still defending it. I know that he has been locked up. He's this age and he's been locked up for four years and he just made a mistake when really he made like 30, but you know, go off sister mm -hmm. girl king. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he apologizes and he says he made a mistake and this is very important to what happens next. Because he just says, I made a mistake and I'm sorry. And then he asks her if she's still coming in Ohio. Yep, immediately. And like the, <laughs> yeah. And like the dummy that she is, she's like, yeah, I'm still coming. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't even give him a hesitation, but no. she's like, yeah, I'm still coming. Yeah, she's definitely still going. Um, right. Meanwhile, you know, her child was definitely tapping her in the top of this episode, letting her know she was hungry. And she sort of for certain mm. shoot her away. <laughs> yeah, she did. And so she said, Go make yourself some pancakes, two year old. And mm -hmm. so she comes out of the room to her mother and her daughter. I mean her sister and her daughter at the table and her sister, you know, is being a mother. You know what I'm saying? She fed mm -hmm. the child, did her Be hair. An auntie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. That's um, auntie baby. Bonus bo bonus mother. That's what aunties are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so she updates her sister as to everything that's going on. And she's like, yeah, so I'm still going to Ohio. Right. And Londa, her sister's like, well, what did he apologize for? Mm -hmm. Because, mind you, she says all this with a headscarf on. So clearly she's doing a lot of work for race relations on, you know, Reed Absolutely. TV, I fully. Which, by the way, is a Negro network. Which... Listen, I see why they have a deal with Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> and Blick TV. All Blick, All Blick. TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, she's letting, Londa's letting old girl know, like, bitch, like, you need to get to the root of the issue. Like, you have all these pictures of all these all these women and stuff, why are you addressing this? Like, what did he say about that with this one third? And she didn't have an answer for her. No, but she's very defensive. Right. So, they decide to have a family function. Oh my God. Which I think they have often because I feel like they, since they all look alike, they all get together. They all often. get together. Everybody looks alike except Gail King. Now, can I just say one thing before we get into I think the she function? Looked like um, she says, I don't, I can't remember if she said in her confessional or to her sister, but she says, you know, it's a, it's hard for a lot of people to love unconditionally. Yeah. I say, you know, Duh. let's, let's, let's talk about this phrase, loving unconditionally, because loving unconditionally, you know, comes with, with uh, an ellipsis. You know what I'm saying? Loving unconditionally comes with conditions. It does. You know, that we have <laughs> mutual respect and love for one another, and we both act in accordance with that. And whatever standards, parameters, morals, whatever that we have set within our personal relationship, th th we, we both, you know, use those as guidelines. You know what I'm saying? Whatever mm -hmm. that looks like, because that's different for everybody. However, it doesn't include 
somebody going out and repeatedly making the same, I'm not even gonna call it a mistake at this point, cause it's not. When you do it multiple times, it's not a mistake. <laughs> so when yeah, somebody no. goes out and they're just doing it's the same relationship, thing over and over and over again, it's behavior. You know what I'm saying? And there's no accountability. That's not loving unconditionally. You know, a nigga doing something that, that makes you feel uncomfortable and you are making excuses for it is not loving unconditionally. No. Hard to and a whole bevy of other things that we're not going to get into right this very second. But, oh, Lord, she is so lost and don't listen to mm. no fucking body. But please go on with the family event. Right. So she tells them all about the pics and the women and all the shit she found out. And so Yolanda, the bounty hunter, um, Thursdays at 8 on A&E. She tells them she moved girlfriend. to Ohio. Then she pull her big booty friend to the side and tells her oh, yes, about yes, all yes. of his antics. Right. And so her big booty friend, Yolanda, bounty hunter, Thursdays at 8 on A&E, girlfriend is like, girl, this is all lust. Like, you just want to fuck him. Yeah. And I did not disagree based on how most of these relationships are, right? Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of them fizzle out when it comes to the physical super quickly because there's so much passion and all this talking and yada, yada, yada. And then it's kind of like, no. <laughs> they all the passion and yada, yada, yada. And then all of a sudden they bone and then it's done, you know? Uh -huh. Like, remember the first season of um, of this show and our white Nubian king and his girl oh, from yeah. eighth grade, right? They, they did it in the shower. And she all was of a sudden, disappointed by his three, she, three pumps, even though that nigga had literally just got out. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, yeah. And also, I mean, yeah, he cute, but he's also, like, 24. Like, I'm you 29, queen. Like, I'm... Not to say, you know, age age ain't just nothing but a number, you know what I'm like? And not only is he just 24, he's 24 and they never had, like, a teenage, like, youth kind of situation, so... And he's 24 and never had a real relationship in addition to that. And he's 24, been locked up since he was 19, 20. And he's 24 and he likes to go out and have a good time. He wants to smoke and drink mm -hmm. and hang out. And you want to be a family it. with a picket fence. Valid, I get it, but it's not happening. So, Yolanda, bounty hunter, just pops up. <laughs> At the window. <laughs> like, the Kool-Aid man. Like, why they have the big-ass window in their house is wild, but she's just like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that shit cracked me. <laughs> when I tell you, that bitch needs her own fucking A and E, show. where is her contract? I and I want a piece of it because I have been campaigning for her to be on A and E. I think it would be a great show. Absolutely. Thursday night at eight o'clock. Thursday night at eight o'clock because she said she comes in like and she's like, girl, what the fuck is this? And you know, they all have it out and Yolanda opens her back. She's like, I figured this shit was coming, so here. So she hands her a bottle of mace. Mace. And she's like, what do I need this for? And Yolanda says the whole crux of the entire series. Yep. You don't know him. <laughs> and she says, because they bleeped it out, in case you have to spray a nigga. Like. <laughs> yeah, in case you have to spray a nigga. You don't know him. You don't. You don't know, like, you don't know what he's like when he gets angry. You don't know what his temperament when he's this or that. Like, you don't know him and you... Mm. Okay, so <clears throat> put a pin on that. Yolanda gives her... Yolanda, bounty hunter, Thursday nights on A&E, gives her the mace. Mm -hmm. She admits to us that she is very much in a rush because she is horny. And she called his dick. A man part. Honestly. 
uh, man part is okay based on what else we saw in this this episode. So I'm sure. Well, but I was dying that that as she's talking about his quote unquote man part, that's when Yolanda Bounty Hunter Thursday nights at eight o'clock on A and E shows up, mm -hmm. savagely eating a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Sharp yeah. Entertainment got jokes all day. <laughs> all day. <Big> time. <laughs> so, uh, we go through a whole bunch of storylines of other people, and then we cut to her her and um, well, um, her daughter driving to Ohio six hours in the middle of the night. Are you excited to see Poppy Daddy? Right. Now, there is a big portion of information that ends up missing that we find out right after because I was unaware of the plan. Mm. So, she going to pick him up or whatever. However, she stops at where she's about to be living next, mm -hmm. which happens to be with his sister, Lydia. Now... Last season, Lydia said, Lydia, her tias, her mama, mm -hmm. all called her muy loco. Uh, mama is crazy. They said she is hasty and my son, brother, should be a therapist because he attracts the crazy ones. Those aren't my words. That's that was the his mother's, mother's words. words. Who is also so, Griselda Blanco. Absolutely. How much coke she moves, just know that Cameron has a song about it. <laughs> I'm just saying, Puerto Ricans in Ohio, you gotta ask I was gonna say, that's not a love story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, I was and just so, like, huh. so she gets to the crib and his sister's in the kitchen. You don't make it tostones and shit. And her Monet Exchange Kitty Cat wig. Be because I was like, oh, Mama got, <laughs> Mama got her a jazzy wig for the cameras. Okay, I'm, mm. I'm with it. And the sister, the, the sister thing about Sister Lydia is she she has the right name because you remember Aunt Lydia from Handmaid's Tale. Sister Lydia is not with the shits. And she asked the most important question I've ever heard asked on this. How show. long you plan on staying? <laughs> <laughs> I said that is the realest question because no other motherfucker asks that question on this. When show. I tell you, Mama had unloaded one bit of clothes, and old girl stopped her. I was like, "Now hold on, before we proceed with anything else, how long you plan on staying?" And that's where I was like, so these niggas didn't discuss a timeline? Because Gail King then proceeds to answer and says, well, I was thinking a few months. And Lydia's face said, huh. And that's what the fuck Lydia gets. Because I thought she had more sense than to say yes, knowing that this girl is buns. Lydia, that's what you get for letting somebody come up in the crib before you even discuss the timeline. But something mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. tells me, because remember, Gail King was like, oh, well, I'm staying with my sister, so it's easy for me to leave. Something tells me she didn't call that lady until she was like on her way or something. Mm hmm Or like the day before. Yeah, probably like, oh, I'm coming up there. He's coming out tonight. I'm coming to get him. And she That's keeps making reference to how her family is her support system in Maryland and how, you know, his family, she's looking to them to be a support system without even discussing it with them. She's looking for them to be a support system to her in Ohio. Well, Lydia and her family drags her in confessionals. Oh, and the mama come over, the sister come <laughs> over, um, her aunties everywhere. They cooking and stuff because you know people are over. Yeah, and you know they have manners. So <laughs> it's time for uh oh he calls and he's like oh I get out tonight you know because at midnight whatever. 
So she goes and rushes to get him, but she leave little, her little daughter there. She's like, uh, which, can I leave Coco here? Now, why the hell would you even want to leave your child in a house where you don't hardly know these people? Right, because Lydia has a daughter and she's like, oh, y'all about the same age, go play. Clearly not, because Lydia's daughter looks very much older and also like, bitch, who the fuck are you? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what? why? I'm my mama didn't tell me to go play with her, so why am I listening to you? Can she stay here while I go get Harry? Right. And but like you said, her family, his family is dragging the shit out of her because they in the confessionals and like you said, it's aunties, sisters, mom. They in the camera talking about this bitch is crazy. Okay, we don't chase no nigga. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the mother's like, I taught my daughters, we don't chase no niggas and they think she's crazy off the strength of literally just chasing after him whether that's their son brother or not mm -hmm. and Valadisha, the sister brought up a really good point when she was like okay um so what happens if he is out here messing around and playing around and you just wasted you and your daughter's time mm -hmm. like have you thought you about it from that vantage point and having him call, or having her call him Poppy Daddy and all that shit. She, like, Lydia asked all the right questions. She did. What happens if this shit doesn't work out? And what did Mama have a re as a response? Nothing. No. Not a zip. Well, it's going to work her, out because Anubis said it's going to. Anubis said we're going to get our happily ever ending. And Anubis said that we're going to get our white picket fence. And, when, you know, it's going to be hard initially, but we're going to have that. So I know it's going to happen. To quote Fraser, just because you put cat treats in the oven, that don't make them biscuits. Ooh. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, that, that ain't, that ain't. That's not no. a queen. No. <laughs> That's not it. So, um, that was it for them. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's take a break. Yes. It's going to be a long episode. Let's yes. take a break and we'll be back with more. Um, who's next? Oh, sorry. Um, we're back. Uh, we're doing a whole special on Love After Lockup season four, which is really uh, season eight. <laughs> We've been doing this for like 2017, so I don't know why they keep fucking with us. I don't sure. either. Why it's not? dumb. But right. you want to do... Um, you want to do somebody new? Yeah. T Taylor and Chance. Oh, um, I actually have names for them. Okay. Um, Taylor, um, Glow, and um, Chance White Apollo. Hmm. Her name is Glow because of her and her sister remind me of the two women on Glamorous Ladies of Wrestling on, on Netflix. <laughs> oh my God. So... <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> her name is Glamorous Lady of Wrestling. Okay, Glow. Glow. Mm -hmm. And White Apollo. White Apollo. From um, Real Housewives. Let me look him up. Because he gave. He gave. Let me you see. Know. Hold on. I, I will say they have a quite a. Um, their storyline is Apollo? quite interesting. When you, when you watch the episode, like, he gave, like,. He kind of fine, but kind of gay. But uh, let's talk through it, right? Let's talk. So, let's, let's chat. Taylor with the Y and an E. She uh, <coughs> she lives. I don't know where they live. It's somewhere in. Um, I actually didn't pay attention to where anybody lives. To be perfectly honest, I actually want to say they're in Missouri. Um, because I think I made that comment, like, you can't spell Missouri. Mm, I'm going to get canceled here. So, <laughs> so um, she is a, you know, a, a, a nice, sweet lady. She, uh, you know, she goes in and starts talking about uh, Chance. Mm -hmm. And how they met. So, Chance... Um, is her boo thing, um, and, 
how he got in prison was that he robbed a bank in a grocery store. Mm -hmm. yep. And he was kind of smooth about it. He was just flirted with the bank teller. And you see it on, they show it, they show the surveillance footage of him mm -hmm. stealing, robbing the bank. And, um, you know, he gets the money and leaves. It doesn't look like he got a lot of money either, but mm -hmm. he got locked up for eight years. Mm -hmm. So... She met him. Um, <laughs> she met him through her ex, who was locked up with him. Mm -hmm. um, and so she's only really spent thirty-two hours with him. But thirty-six she is, physically. Uh, I had to yeah. note it. <laughs> yeah. So they have, you know, they have a lot of passion built up. She said. Um, um, he said, he looks like Brad Pitt. Oh yeah, and no. No. I don't know. He looks like he would be uh, like an extra on a TBS show. Yeah, like he was in the coffee shop or something. Now, yeah, you know, on the closer or something like, or like a Rizzoli in the Isles or something like that. For my our Patreon users know this, but for those who don't, we've had conversations around niggas in prison specifically with this controlling energy. Mm -hmm. And listen, I get it. I do not date niggas in prison. I am not with niggas in prison. But I just do not understand how you let a nigga in prison control what you do outside of prison. I'm saying. Calling me, asking me where I'm at, who I'm with, telling me I can't go. What you gonna do? What are you going to do? Because I'm going to block you. Like, what are you, what are you going to do? Right. You going to tell me I can't go hang out with my friends? I can't even see you. Get the fuck out of here. So, right. he has that same element of control that we have seen time and time again of an inmate who is controlling their partner from the inside. And... Ooh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute because when I tell you I was perturbed, disturbed, annoyed, worried, so many emotions ran through mm. me. Right. Um, at the same time, we meet her sister, Bobby. <laughs> um, this is why I came up with Glow because mm. they look like twin sister wrestlers. So <laughs> they, Bobby, you know... Twin Taylor says, you know, she was the good one and Bobby was the bad one. So she says she she got locked up herself. Mm -hmm. Um, and but she's out and she's got her life together mm -hmm. and you know she's she's doing she's thriving or whatever, right? She got more sense than her sister, right? And she tells her, you know, like like they all families do, like you don't know him. We get locked up for mm -hmm. all that stuff, but then you get to start learning more about her, and um, she has three kids. Mm -hmm. uh, Taylor does, mm -hmm. um, two different baby daddies, and one was the love of her life, mm -hmm. who the sadly passed two's, away. Set the yeah. oldest two's father. All right, oldest two, eldest two's father passed away. Mm -hmm. um, devastating accident, mm -hmm. and her other child's father. They split amicably, mm -hmm. you know, shit happens. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he cool. They co-parent. Right. But so there's a, there's a third co-parent in the mix. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday morning. Because <laughs> that, 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 that house exploded. I was like, oh, oh baby, they it was very kids, live, laugh, too. love, nigga. Yeah, um, so she, the youngest child is very cute. She's three, she's, she's, she's verbal, she's great. They're on the, she's got a car picking him up, and that's she how we find like the story about her baby daddy. It's so cute. Yes. <laughs> but she says, and I know this is what troubled you, because Chris Rogers stopped this at this point, too. Because he paused the TV, he said, wait a fucking minute. I'm going to read you my note after you say it. So the child says, you know, they're talking about chance or whatever. And she says, the little girl goes, I want to go to prison where a pot where chance is. And her mother responds, 
You're not old enough to go to prison to be with him. Okay, I'm going to read you my notes. <laughs> Two lines. I knew you were going to. I knew this was going to piss you off. First one says, the baby just says she wants to go to prison. Lord. <laughs> yeah. The second one says, she just told the child she's not old enough to go to prison. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that shit was wild. Of all because the responses, not only... this is what you say? Right. You are affirming in this behavior. I, it's literally and why like, does she know what she prison is? She just told is? the child she's not old enough to go to prison. Nigga. Nigga. <laughs> right. What? When you get 16, that's you where my too. that is where my let me not say that's where it began. It began but this is where all of my my rush of emotions really started in this moment and then they just continued for but we'll keep going. Right. So, you know, fast forward it's Christmas time and she's decorating and uh, you know, I know she has a VIP card at Tuesday morning big lots, mm -hmm. Michaels, mm -hmm. Joanne Fabrics. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like potpourri threw up in that shit, mm -hmm. right? The and, packets. Right. And this is the part where I learned that this nigga crazy. Mm. So, the part of that that I laughed about this, because she gave them kids them Choco Tacos, and them kids were fucking them Choco Tacos. Uh. <laughs> and then bragging about it. I was like, the yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the funny part, because he was on the phone, and he was like, mm-hmm, we having Choco Tacos. He's which, like, do they have Choco ice cream tacos. in prison? They're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have ice cream in prison? No. Um, oh. you know, I love ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> so he they're having a really um mm -mm. an inappropriate conversation in front uh -uh. of the children Hold on. The speaker phone. he calls being verbally abusive out the gate okay oh, yeah. on the speakerphone with the babies right there before the choco taco talk he is accusing her of talking to other niggas and she ain't been answering her phone all day and he is talking a whole wild and she giggles in front of her daughters and is not worried about what they're internalizing by watching their mother in this type of behavior. And your little like passive ass giggle to try to like pass this off as, oh, he's just, daddy chance is just telling a joke. Like- It's the same giggle that women give when they niggas being homophobic. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. He didn't mean that. Yes, he did, bitch. Yes, he did. Yes, he meant it. So, and the fact that she is, that she's, a, a, she's got somebody in her life like this with three whole daughters watching her example is just, and that's not mm -hmm. where my concerns stop, but please continue. Because... In this phone call, he's being manipulative over the phone. Mm -hmm. um, I'll talk about his other nasty shit that he says, but mm -hmm. he talks about her sister being there and being a hindrance because she has her concerns like a normal sister would. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't understand why she needs to be a part. You know, this is our relationship. We'll build a room for her uh, in a garage. We'll build a room for her in a garage. The whole time I'm thinking, none of you all are bright because... If she's on probation or on parole or anything, he can't live there because you can't live with the fugitive, with not a fugitive, but with the ex convicted felon. You know what I mean? Mm. You can't. We learned that mm -hmm. plenty of times on this show. Recently. So, um, but above anything else, above even that, you're okay with this stranger nigga moving into your house with your three with daughters. Three daughters and he, and he's that coming kills me every straight time. out he's coming I mean, he's coming straight out and you got three little girls in the crib my note says because he talks about like some sex stuff he talks about her having edible panties on and he was like yeah. black licorice so my note says he wants her to wear black licorice underwear he is going to eat all of your children yeah He's of, he's of he's of a demonic uh 
hellbound mm -hmm. force. You know what I'm saying? And then my next note says, <laughs> he wants to put it in her butt. Let's me know. <laughs> Like straight out the gate, nigga, that's what you're talking about. This not Let's even after, like, me years, know no, a you know lot. What I'm saying? Straight out the gate, that's what you're talking about. And he don't have I no mean, coin. He don't even ask are the girls in the room, are the babies in the room, you know, like can you he don't even ask none of that. He just starts talking and it's disgusting. And he's he's Dorito bag and Vaseline behavior, girl. He's overwhelming and he's yeah, I'm just not really hype about this at all. Did you, do you follow Humans in New York? Uh, yeah. Did you see like that nine part story about that white woman? Mm-mm. Oh, nigga. She was- Give me the story of 140. She was, she had had a, a fucked up childhood growing up. Ended up getting with this nigga who was like, just the bee's knees to her and everything else. Had mad babies for him. Didn't actually, they ended up doing in vitro, not in vitro, in vitro, because he couldn't have kids. So they ended up having like four kids. Come to find out he was touching all, he was touching most of them. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Um, and I almost didn't click the story because the lady just looked like, I mean, she is a real estate agent, but she just looked like, so I'm like, what the hell is this? I don't read no story about this white woman. Why she got so many so many parts. Nah. Mm. Mm -mm. Let's move on. <laughs> All I'm saying is you can't be having no stranger nigga move up in the house with three, three kids no. up in there. No. Three kids, no. period. Not even just three, three kids. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. Let's jump. move on to, uh, Ooh, let's do Lacey and White Honestly. Antoine. Oh, trifling Lacey and Wario. Got it. I ne <laughs> he looks like Wario. You can Google it. Hold on. W A R I O. That's not evil Mario, is it? it oh is. my God. <laughs> <laughs> I just called oh, him white, um, but he ain't white though. No, but he he just gave Wario. He's passing. Um, <laughs> he so it opens with you know the dolls are dolling at at, at home Peyton sip. You know there's no you know sucking digging gawk mm -hmm. uh, at this one, and I've noticed that they um, are you fighting with your cat? I was telling Noah, yeah, and I'm trying to eat a peanut butter filled pretzel off of the microphone. <laughs> the camera sees it, so I'm like, you're going to have to adjust it. Uh, okay. Close the door. Close it, seriously. All the way. Stop. Close the door. All the way. Continue. So, um,. She has um, reality TV eyelashes, mm -hmm. um, but um, we learn her story, and essentially, she wants to sow her wild oats before after being married for twenty years. No, 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 no. no I'm no, getting no. to it. I'm getting to it. <laughs> so, she married her high school boo thing. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, loving each other more than peanut butter, right? Mm -hmm. Time goes on and, you know, they kind of, you know, that's they only knew each other. I'm assuming both of them only knew each other, it, biblically, right? So, after a while, they wanted to explore other people and, you know, different different things, right? And so, um, she has a friend, um, did we, did we find out his mama's friend, his, his mama's name? No. 
I, I didn't get it, but mm. it doesn't matter. Right. Well, she also has a friend. Let's call her Stacy. Um, Stacy has a, has a son named Antoine. And uh, Antoine looks like, a, you know, he was a skater boy. He says, see you later, boy. You know what I mean? He looked really regular and young. He looks like um, Antoine. At first glance, Antoine is white or maybe some Latino. Yeah. Upon further investigation. <laughs> Oh, just with my eyeballs, not online. Mm. It just looks to me as if Antoine has a black daddy. That's why I gave him... Because first of all, I don't know many white men named Antoine. Mm. That was actually the very first thing. And then, mm -hmm. you know, but it wasn't even just his haircut. Because I was like, mm, he got that John Bonet, deceitful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't know. But I kept looking and I kept looking and I was like, Adonis vibe. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. So uh she met him through her mom through his mama cuz they were friends. You being and... real nice cuz her she left her husband. They was in a committed I was relationship. There. <laughs> they was in a committed relationship and this bitch was with him for 20 years and then said, "I met a nigga." Through my Yeah, girl. she yeah, <laughs> she met, she left she left her husband for her homegirl son who was locked up in prison. Wasn't no exploring other people. Wasn't no, no. She left her nigga. <laughs> she did. She left for her, her friend's for son. In and now her friend hates her. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, her son was like, I know I'm the reason why that he, she got a divorce. Because I wasn't going to continue on with this. Okay, look at you being honorable. But, like... <laughs> She consciously made the decision, and like she looks like she was over her husband. She looks like she's over people in general, uh, because Lacey just looks like she just she gives like old Tara Reid, um, kind of in like her reaction, like her action and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, she don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. She is happily dating her young Buck, who's ten years her junior, and her friends are like. Hey, bitch, like, is, is he going to contribute? Is he going to, you know, do X, Y, and Z? And essentially, no, because he's never been in a real relationship, a long-term relationship. He's never had a long a job. He's never done X, Y, and Z. And so, therefore, her friends are like, you know, I don't want to, you know, get in the way of love, but you not, you not, you not. So he calls her from the hole, which I didn't even know was a thing. <laughs> And Me either, which is why I assume I put this is a producer phone call. Did she in this whole thing? It sounded, is, is chaos and negativity clusterfuck because yeah. she's worried that his prison stay is gonna have to be extended because he already been acting up and it's already been extended. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. He asked about his mom and she's like, "Your mom has a drinking issue, <laughs> and she hates me." Right. And so. And he starts talking about what he so she's like when you get out of prison like what are you excited for you know that fishing shit and that nigga's like i can't wait to hang with the people who i want i'm cool with when i get out the ladies the niggas everybody and she's like yeah mm -hmm. like that's totally cool and then right. she's claiming to trust him but in the process of of really and we should have known because again it's always in the eyes She's claiming to trust him, but in the same breath that she is giving us this confessional about trusting him, she is in the process of writing this little nigga a letter, catfishing him as somebody else to test his loyalty. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And says, everybody's a little bit crazy. I can't even tell him to run, I could tell him to stay. Nah, this is his karma. <laughs> Because you was messing with that. Nah, this is... Dude, oh, yeah, this just has to true. play out. Well, he didn't do nothing wrong except for whatever he did to be in prison. He's just young. He So he fucked his friend's mama. Like, his mama's friend. Like, what? what's... The, he ain't do nothing wrong. He knew that lady was married. He wasn't the... He, he 
He he not the one that was married. He's not. It's different when you know that. No, it's not. <laughs> No, that's not my responsibility. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Fuck your happy home, Listen. Bitch. That's that. Yeah. Problem. In the words of Riley Freeman, when does the act of personal responsibility come <laughs> into, the, into the equation? You could have said no. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, so? It went. And how he was locked up at the time that they met, like, for real, for real. So it's like. Nah, you broke up shit. for somebody. You literally left you. your twenty-year husband for a nigga you've been with for two. Years. Like you don't want to be out here, Queen. You don't want to be out. You think you want to be out here, but you, but you don't. Don't want to be out here. Ooh, that nigga's gonna have to eat activated woman. charcoal ice cream. And what are mm -hmm. you gonna be doing when he's pointing his finger all hard at you at a Tekashi Six Nine concert? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Wait until you have. Wait until you gotta play two K. Okay. Wait until he asks you hmm. to see Travis Scott live. Oh. Mm. <laughs> oh. Oh God. Oh, well, actually, maybe we just, should remove that. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm just saying, in general, not because of that was one off. Yeah. But still, like, eesh, yeah. That's like, ooh, baby, let's go to the, uh, ooh, this might be a little too personal for you. Baby, let's go to a Larry June concert. <laughs> uh, speaking of which. Because I, too, have been invited to a Larry June concert. <laughs> Wait, I have so, a Larry June merch right now. This is Larry oh, June see, merch. there you go. <laughs> so we were in um, an Uber Lyft ride share situation mm -hmm. and so we had you know a young non-dusty stud from los angeles <laughs> decide to give us a ride so you know when you get in a car with other black people they be trying to flex and whatever with their music or whatever so we like okay so she puts on they put on this one song and i'm like this gotta be their music because they real hype and just put this on Mm. When I tell you, it was like the worst thing ever. It was like I'm a, is, what was that? <laughs> I think you have a headache. I, I don't know. <laughs> like I wanted to bash my like eardrums in, like into the Ooh. like. Remember on Bird Box when oh. like, they were killing themselves and shit like that, and that. banging their heads into. Oh God, you should. I just ain't been able to look at Sandra Bullock right since the blind side, I told you. Well, I mean, it's about Corona, so why not? Um, but is this person, Young oh, is no, the Story of OJ mm -mm. by Young Boy Never Broke Again? Wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. Play it. Oh, no. Yeah, no, play it. Oh, cheese and rice. Let me, um, how do I do this? I'm old. Okay. Um, Shazam's. How do I? Oh my gosh, just hold on. One minute. These pretzels are saving my life, but trying to eat them on the sneak is killing me. It's like he redid, uh... Cause he's, he can't afford that sample. No. No. Not at all. And it goes, it gets worse.
I see. Why you wanted to. Imagine having to go to that because your nigga want to take you. That I think I would have a heart attack. Oh yeah, you gotta fake, you gotta, listen, gotta fake a um, Crohn's attack and be like, girl, I got, I can't do it. Oh my God. It's true shit, no, listen. Like I never know when it's gonna I be have it. irritable <laughs> bowel syndrome, I cannot go. <laughs> it flares up, you never know when it comes. If he took me to a place, I'd have to just completely dip though from like his life. <laughs> yeah. Drop him off at a Del Taco and never call him again. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's take a break and finish this up, and we'll be back after these messages. Hit a clock. Hit a clock. And we're back. I'm still talking about um, Love After Lockup, our extravaganza. Mm -hmm. and if you want to see the video version of this podcast, uh, sign up for Patreon. But for this episode of the main stage, you'll be able to access it for free on YouTube publicly so you can watch it and get your life. Oh. I forgot about that. <laughs> you can smoke on camera. You can smoke on camera. It's fine. Oh, I'm not talking about for the smoking because I've been sneaking eating these pretzels. <laughs> oh. I can, I can fix that. That's not I'm a not problem. worried about it. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm not going to fix it. <laughs> you tell me what it looks like, okay? If it, if it looks bad, I'll tell you, obviously. But um, So we're back. Mm -hmm. And more um, love after lockup extravaganza. Let's go with um, the Black Smile. <laughs> uh, we have Kayla and Martel, and so I have Kayla mm -hmm. and Project Pat. Oh. <laughs> yeah, mm. I gave him Project Pat. I'm... It might change throughout the... It's going to be a form of some Southern rapper. So it's either might be Crit next week. It could be um, UGK. I don't know. But it's some Southern rapper of sorts. Okay. Um, mm. the only... She looks like Mumin. I called her short name because... When I tell you, mama looks like she took the illest of baths in something wet and greasy. Yeah, she ha she has Vaseline on her face, like at all times. Her wig, everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's real mm -hmm. shiny. She looks like she's in that, um, what's that video? Gonna make, gonna make, gonna, gonna make, make your make body wet. Yeah. Gonna make, <laughs> you, gonna make you scream, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's exactly what she looked like um so she uh you know uh pittsburgh mumin you know she and her gay named hollywood are linking up because she's packing they're in atlanta mm -hmm. um she moved to atlanta from pittsburgh to be pittsburgh with pittsburgh. him when he gets out of prison, Martel. Yes. They met in 06. Mm -hmm. um, been going strong for 13 years. Uh, he went to uh, prison for drugs and guns. Yeah. She was very vague about that. Mm -hmm. So she quoted, she went for drugs and guns. Because mm -hmm. why else would you go to prison? And um, She should have just said he went to prison for being uh, black. <laughs> no, because white men have a lot of drugs and guns. Oh, I'm not too. implying they don't. I that was more of a dig at the justice system. Okay, didn't oh, didn't. Well, oh, so. <laughs> but I guess didn't it doesn't apply if you actually on, did I'm have sorry. drugs and guns. So you know what? Just scratch that from the record. <laughs> my bad. Didn't mean to protest on you. I'll like, take my blue vest off now. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they have the most guns. Take off the blue vest and the cookies, everybody. <laughs> False alarm. <laughs> yes, they were together since the oh, I think they like me face. Because we definitely saw yeah. old pictures of him and his very tall tee and his uptowns mm -hmm. and his, you know, jorts, mm -hmm. jants. What they used to wear back mm -hmm. in the day, essentially, wide, wide leg, uh, 
denim chinos, you know, essentially what the kids are wearing now, but they wore those with tall tees in uptowns and bandanas fitted or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So they are the only couple I think that we've ever seen who has a relationship for this long. Uh, mm -hmm. He did request from her that she do not have sex with anybody else over the course of his 13 year imprisonment. Mm-hmm. And production asked, well, when's the last time you had sex with somebody? And she said, mm, would you wait 13 years? <laughs> and when I tell you, I said, that is the answer. That's it right yeah. there, because would you? No. Because I'm not telling y'all I fucked earlier than today, but I'll tell you that I may or may not have over the last 13 years. It could have been yesterday. It could have been eight years ago. Just saying. But, you know, yeah. She has um, unrealistic expectations, oh, like um, most people on this show. Mm -hmm. She wants to get married, and she um, has an idea of a engagement ring that she wants mm -hmm. and it costs between thirty two thousand and forty thousand dollars. Yep. For the ring. For the ring. Um and her homosexual friend, um, Hollywood, asks the important question, well, how you expect him to pay for some shit and he uh you know ain't got a job. And she <laughs> said, Oh well he's gonna get one. And um, then he's gonna start working on that thirty-two to forty thousand dollar ring, uh, and then also um, I'm trying to get pregnant immediately. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I really don't have much to say about them just now, but that was exactly what happened. Yeah. Yeah, nigga. I don't have any comments yet. Oh, but I, I can. I will though. We should call him Martel USA, the cognac. Yeah. 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 Blue Swift. Yeah. <laughs> Which is <laughs> if you want a good drink, Martell and Simply Lemonade is really great, by the way. And Blue Swift is that one of our... Martell's. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. That that's was our dinner we'll choice. We're gonna call him Blue yeah, Swift. Blue Swift. Martell USA. Or Martell USA, mm -hmm. one or the other. Mm -hmm. That works. Uh let's uh move on. <clears throat> to uh I would like to end with Kevin and Tiffany. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who mistakenly <clears throat> I, that's who I meant was giving Adonis vibes earlier. Oh yeah, got gotcha, you, uh -huh. gotcha, gotcha. Um let's go to uh inappropriate Rick and Raydeen. Mm. Uh Rick has great teeth. He is severe <laughs> and severely inappropriate. Mm. Um I will say this is the episode where we first got our purposeful cock shot on camera. He whipped his dick out and let us see it. Um, <laughs> That's not even the only appropriate uh, part. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, however, parts of his story were so endearing. I, know, I did not expect was, the end. Yes, how to <laughs> I just still could not get over the fact. So... He is in a relationship with a lady in jail named Raydeen, who this also happens to be another couple who started before uh, Raydeen went to prison and, um, and it has continued on since. Now, what we would like to note is that Raydeen, Big Astrid. As, so as much as that name sounds like she is 83 years old <laughs> and lived in the first trailer park ever known to men, She's not. Mm -hmm. Rick was 40 years old when they met, and she was 18 or 19 years old. Which leads me to believe that she was neither of those ages. No. Well, if she went to nope. prison, no. I could probably no, be 17. I'm, you think she was younger than He was 40, okay? And she was teen, nigga, okay? And that's really... My point... And he said he's a slut. He said he had slept with over 300 women. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he was also, what we learned later, um, he was living fast and loose, and he was addicted to heroin. Not the, to say that From the age of 12 who, to 18. Yeah. So, 
Not to say that people who are addicts do lewd acts like that, um, but when you tell me that you used to have a really awful lifestyle coupled with you having sex with 300 women, you know, and the, and the young lady was 18, so you say, I'm inclined to believe something else. Mm. You know, I'm inclined to, because, you know, not everybody's putting their face you know, their best foot face or best face forward in these mm. situations, right? So I'm going to try to, like, peel back the layers. And I I don't... I want to say that that person was of age, but I probably... I don't know. Um, I'm going to air that... I'm not saying she was, like, 14, but I will... She probably age of consent, whatever legal age of that would be in whatever state mm-hmm. they're in. Because in some cities, it's, like... 13. Oh, God. Anyway, um... Bridgeport, Connecticut. Of course not. I learned Bridgeport. that shit. That shit was wild. Wow. Still? Um, That's crazy. I don't know. The reason... So, when I when I lived in the dorms, um, I became an RA, and so they would ask, like, you know, the rules about, like, having overnight visitors or whatever, and so it got to, like, the age question of, like, you know, overnight visitors, visitors they have to have an ID. And on one of the signs in the building, it said nobody the age of 13 and under can stay overnight without supervision. And when I asked, I asked about that to my director at the time, and he was like, that's the age of consent here. And I said, that is disgusting. Mm. So therefore, they can be overnight. Mm. Hopefully it's changed since then, but whatever. Age of consent should be 40 as far as I'm concerned. But anywho. Oh, great, great. <laughs> um, but anywho, she, uh, my next note about her was that she is the brandy of her family because all of her family has died. Yeah. And she, <laughs> while she was locked up. Yeah. While she was locked up. Mama it's is the grim reaper in of Connecticut. everything. Oh, we'll see. We've moved up. So good. But it definitely used to say 13 in Bodine Hall. Mm. Uh, Yeah. So she, her whole family's dead pretty much. And so her only support system is kind of him. Um, And he's like calling. (laughs) He says something real funny because he's on the phone with her. He was like, yeah, I can't wait to have your titties against my back. (laughs) Oh my God. When I tell you, I screamed because I was like, where's this going? (laughs) <laughs> I was like, oh, you went to some shit. Yeah. <laughs> I said, this guy said, yes. what? Now, wait a minute. I've heard a lot of things. Yes. yes. <laughs> Pegging is a theme this season. Word. <laughs> so, then he decides to let us know that he has a big dick and he knows how to use it. Mm-hmm. More importantly, yeah. that his balls don't sag to the floor. <sighs> Because he shared so many things that we just 50. didn't need to. We just didn't need to know. Now he's out with his homeboys, and his homeboys are their bike club. So you just they're a motley crew. Oh yes, honey, sons of anarchy, <laughs> the older yeah. ones. Um, mm-hmm. they've all lived a lot of life, and it seems like they really do love him, and they're concerned for his well being, and that she's mm-hmm. not going to not only take advantage of him, but also lead him down a path because of his former addiction and her having addiction issues. Um, And the one homeboy is real concerned that this is a scam, but this nigga is giddy for her ass. Okay, he's like, I hope I'm not getting played, but I'm too dumb in love to give a fuck. (laughs) Yeah, he's not that disillusioned. He knows that this could go left, but he's having the time of his life right now. He's like, be present now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. be here now <laughs> yeah, so I'm living in the moment yeah. I'm just saying and that was him um, you know we'll see what happens with them uh, but I do the last <laughs> storyline was <laughs> the most wild <laughs> and I feel like Sharp Entertainment knows us very well mm-hmm. like i firmly believe that they do shit purposely for us i you know what there'd be moments where i'm like 
and it started so I you I, like you wanted us to talk about this like you, know you, you did you could have kept this out because you all have been listening since our original white Nubian king so when you brought another white Nubian king around you knew we were going to be invested mm-hmm who is who is open and honest and a loving and affirming parent of a I'm an assuming queer child who has because... more sense than he does <laughs> but yes <laughs> Yes. So, uh. This is the uh, one who I Kevin. said is giving me Adonis vibes. That makes sense. This is so the Kevin, one. um. He gave us his own nickname. Um, gently used baby daddy. <laughs> <And> <laughs> gently used baby daddy and, um, Tiffany mm -hmm. and crazy Kayla. Ooh. There's another Kayla on this show. I have it. Uh, I at first called her Brooke Hogan, but then I was like, no. No, let's call her Honey Buns, because that bitch is out no, of her mind. Yeah. <laughs> she is. Ooh. Whoa. So, um, this is different because he's going out on a date. Now, Kevin is, um, he look, he real smooth white boy. I'm not going, you know. Or something. Who says, who says. They, I will say, all these white folks say nigger. Oh, yeah. We'll get that out the way. Every last one. Because Kevin is white and says nigger, but I don't... Is, yeah, he was. I don't... But that was where I told there you. There are moments... There are moments where I'm, I'm like, there is something else happening here. Yeah. I but think he had a light-skinned again, black daddy that his... you Latina. I don't even know. Oh, you Latina, you don't get to say nigger either. But I anywho, you were talking to me. not you, but no, not you. I was like, I'm but I'm also black, nigga, so I can't. <laughs> no, no, not, not you. You are blacker than I am. So, <laughs> not, not that confession. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Hey, girl, I mean, you up here doing, you know. I don't do any of that shit. I, mm, mm, black. Oh. <laughs> 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 Anywho. Oh. Uh, um, so he goes on on a date, um, but it's really hanging out with his friend. Um, I also want to point out that our gently used baby daddy is a short king. Yeah. Oh, 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 because oh, oh. when fun Mama pulled up, yeah, Mama pulled up, and he can't, and he's titty height, uh -huh. which I was like, okay, girl, you should use that to your advantage. Uh huh. Because he was literally came up right to her cleavage. Um, but she just happens to be a friend that he happens to just meeting, going on a date with. Whatever. It's Which platonic. they kept alluding to, like an after party, but I. But she. Well, was, yeah. yeah, I feel like it was a date, and when he laid it all on the line for her, she was like, "Nah, mm -hmm. <laughs> you got a lot of stuff going on." Mm -hmm. So uh, he, um, Kevin met Tiffany through Facebook. Mm -hmm. That's the girl in question, mm -hmm. um, and uh, she is orange as. Uh, the president of 45. Mm -hmm. um, she went to prison for drug possession. Yes. Uh, he then tells us he has an ex named Kayla. And I hate when people say that they have a crazy ex because I'm always like, well, what did you do to attribute mm -hmm. to this behavior that you're quote unquote calling crazy? Um, and he talks about like how he, She's keyed his car. She's keyed other bitches' cars who have other been in his house. Car. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the girl he's on a date with feels like, I know him for a minute, and I feel like he's addicted to the drama. Like, he talks about being, like, into women and having all this stuff, and they just kind of just happen to not go well. Yeah. So, uh... In the middle of this date, she, uh, Kayla calls him. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, trying to skirt it away. Like, you know, whatever. But 
it's evident that he's still fucking her. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, you know, his friend is like, uh, I don't know What's if I'm going to go on another date with him. Oh, uh-huh. Oh, oh, yeah. I haven't okay. got to that part. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going on a date with him, but he got a lot of stuff going on. So next, his son comes over, um, they, because clearly they are a they. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they come over and Kevin is um, packing, mm -hmm. um, you know, like bras, panties, other accoutrements mm -hmm. for his um, queen Tiffany. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his son, his son, uh, his child, child, let's go. With that. I don't know. His child mm -hmm. is like, Dad, I, uh, you gotta get a handle on your women. <laughs> yeah. And like, is, is real, you look at real funny in the light with you not telling Kayla the real deal and you also getting somebody from prison. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you live in fast and wild right now. And, you know, Kevin's like, you know, thank you, you know, son, child, I appreciate all this, but, you know, I'm trying to, you know, do right or whatever. Mm -hmm. And his and his child is like, I don't know if this is going to work. Like, I, good luck to him. Mm -hmm. And then. <laughs> In the middle of this nigga doing a confessional, his doorbell starts rat, ringing. Rat, rat. And you start hearing knocking on the door. And he's sitting here in true Zoom fashion with a top and no pants on. Mm -hmm. Doing his confessionals, because, you know, that's where the confessionals happen in these people's script. And Kayla, the ex, is over there. And let me explain to you who Kayla is. Kayla is every bleach blonde chubby face white girl you see on tiktok mm, mm, i got one better for you if any of you have seen that tiktok i and i only see tiktoks when they're posted on twitter or instagram but there is a a tiktok of all these white kids with their um their version of aave accents and one of them is like my mom just a ghetto ass white girl. That's just who I am, you know, because that's how they think we all talk. Kayla is that kind of white girl. She's a real like cash me outside type bitch who you really like has never really been caught outside. <laughs> you know? Cause her first three words were pussy ass nigga. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Through the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She says nigga freely. And not only that, they were only in a relationship for a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. So she, uh, he opens the door and she has young boy never been broke in the car <laughs> i was like is that her child who is that yeah <laughs> and she's confused as to like why are these people at her house at the house but it's like bitch is at your house so she's like want to know what's going on and production is like who the fuck you talking to leave yeah like you don't even because i could tell this part was kind of real mm -hmm. because the way mama pulled into the, the driveway. Mm -hmm. uh, she's unhinged because she didn't even go all the way into the driveway. She halfway in the middle she's of the street. Yeah, she's like on the curb, driveway and street all at the same time. Blocking all traffic. And I think that's the first Every time direction. we ever seen production be like, bitch, who the fuck is you? Like, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> they were so annoyed. <laughs> and they had a black woman producer this time and she was like, oh no, she got to go. Yeah. And they, then Kate bum rushed her. <laughs> <laughs> like, you've got Can't to go. Run. You've got to go now. But he gives, of course, the vague nigga ass answer when somebody is completely caught off guard. I told yeah. you I was doing something. <laughs> right. I told you I would call you later. That's not enough. <laughs> this, this is not a communication. At all. At all. But that's his fault. Also, this is this is your your reaping. 
because it's your fault that this that you've been fucking this bitch and making her think y'all are still in a relationship or or that there's a potential for a relationship again or whatever ideas are coming from you all's physical interaction you still carried on with her knowing that she was not wrapped tight mm-hmm 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 okay knowing that they did not close the soda bottle all the way that bitch's bubbles she don't have all her bubbles She's not well. No. I'm not saying she's crazy. She's just a little unwell. Yeah. And you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, when that bitch showed up, I said, oh, nah. this was definitely not real. I don't think this was planned at all. Yeah, no, that's not, you know, I was like, no, that's not scripted. When mm -hmm. production is like, whoa, 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 whoa. And she came <laughs> over in fight clothes with NBA mm -hmm. skirt, skirt, or whoever the fuck in the car. She came over and like, I'm ready to put some Vaseline on my pink face and and go. Even though she looked right. again, she looked like she. You seen that? Did you see that video? Of that little boy, they was doing nigga knocking them kids, and the one little boy kept falling as he ran away. Mmm. That looked like her when she fight. Well. Huh. <sighs> I don't think she can fight, but... No, I hell know. no, that she bitch can't would. fight. That bitch ain't never had her ass whooped properly. You always know the types. You know the types. Always. Well, that was the end of today's episode. Thank you so, for tuning in. Yeah, recap. Uh, shit's crazy down at the Wii TV. <laughs> um, for future episodes, uh, we will be covering this on Patreon exclusively. I know you're able to see the video version of this podcast everywhere for free, but going forward, it'll be on Patreon. Um, sign up for $7, all access, you get everything. Um, remember, we have Family Game Night coming up um, on the 25th. Mm -hmm. uh, if you didn't see the first one, it's up on our YouTube channel right now. Uh, YouTube.com slash J xd podcast jade and xd podcast i think that's what it is mm -hmm. if not you can always look at our link tree and link just there <laughs> <laughs> um you know thank you for all thank you all for listening um and we'll see you all next time all right bye if for whatever god awful reason you want more jade and xd make sure you subscribe to us on patreon